Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 chaotic SNL sketches that were never going to go as planned. You know what, Debbie? You are totally ruining my trip to Disney. <laughs> for this list, we're looking at the sketches that were doomed to fail in the most hilarious way possible. Did we forget a sketch that you loved? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. Lisa from Temecula Pedro Pascal sits down for dinner with an unexpectedly hilarious guest in this sketch. Ego Wodum's Lisa has opinions about almost everything, especially her well-done steak. Cook my meat. I don't want to see not one speck of red. I can't be getting sick tonight. I gotta be in court in the morning. She attempts to cut it and subsequently shakes the table. Pascal can't help but laugh as the dining experience heads into extreme territory. I, I, I didn't tell you guys, uh, but a few nights back, this, uh, this dog... This dog followed me home. I'm about to tear this thing up. Bowen Yang also breaks as Wodum's character reveals her absurd beliefs, finally succumbing to the ridiculous premise and set design. Is everything going all right? We've been getting some complaints. Oh, because we black? <laughs> we Just when you think that SNL doesn't make many mishaps anymore, this fantastic sketch comes along to remind everyone of the wonders of a beautiful accident. Number 19. The Lovas with Barbara and Dave. Will Ferrell and Rachel Dratch are the most lovably bizarre couple in this recurring sketch. We were wondering, is this your first time at the Welshley Arms Hotel? Uh, yeah. Jimmy Fallon plays the single guy Dave, a fellow hotel guest that just wants to enjoy the hot tub. Fallon instead finds himself at odds with the two swingers. And until the flies and ants came, methinks it was the finest love making the world had ever known. Yes. Mm. His reputation for breaking character continues in this sketch, which sees even Farrell falling apart along with him. Drew Barrymore also steps in as a friend of the couple and barely escapes the scene without hiding a smile herself. Dave, 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 <laughs> David. <laughs> With accents galore, this strange session only gets better with a few unplanned laughs. Number 18. Extremely stupid. Even back in the early days of Saturday Night Live, performers still ended up breaking on live TV. This famous sketch with Gilda Radner and Candace Bergen is one such example. Well, here, have some milk. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Radner plays a somewhat inept person that can't seem to get ahead. Bergen's character functions as the brainy voice of reason, but she makes a mistake that says otherwise. You're not too bright, are you, Fern? I mean, <laughs> whatever your name was. The sketch completely fumbles with the guest host's gaffe, and she responds by laughing. Radner carries on without any sign of stopping, while her scene partner can barely hold it together through the extended speech. Extremely stupid people are discriminated against all the time. And I should know, and so should Fern, because we are <laughs> extremely stupid people. Number 17, Fernando's Hideaway with Hulk Hogan and Mr. T. Billy Crystal always has fun with his guests in the recurring Fernando sketch. I am in a chippy chipper mood tonight. We got the greatest stars in the history of the world right now who are stealing my plates. I tell you this right now. During this journey to his hideaway, wrestler Hulk Hogan and actor Mr. T stop by to flaunt their muscles and attitude. The latter pumps iron throughout and even gets a chance at a one-liner. Now what is this contraption? What, what is this? It used to be a parking meter. Crystal's constant barrage of jokes finally breaks through the guests' tough exteriors. The duo chuckles as Fernando's wild personality proves to be too chaotic for them. Recovering with some spectacular comebacks, the comedian goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with giants and completely transforms them with a few well-timed lines. You know when you laugh, your little things there go bambi, 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 bambi. <laughs> Number 16. Kissing Family. Brecken brings his boyfriend home. The famous Vogelcheck family has their son and his boyfriend over, introducing the latter to their overly affectionate behavior. My little boy is a man! Each and every member seems to kiss each other with reckless abandon. By the time Fred Armisen's father gives a speech, he accidentally hits Bill Hader and sends the sketch into a spiral of laughter. Sometimes we get so caught up in loving our own family we forget about... <laughs> loving... <laughs> 
the star-studded ensemble then tries to save Kate McKinnon with a daisy chain of life-saving kisses. Every passing maneuver is funnier than the next, making for a finale that nearly destroys the cast with the gleeful insanity of it all. Armisen and Hayter in particular are never the same after the halfway point. That's what I call a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> Number 15. Massive Head Wound Harry this party sketch receives an unlikely guest in the form of the injured Harry. Hey, great party. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm late. I forgot where you lived. All of the guests are reasonably alarmed by his massive head wound that causes many of them to run in fear. Dana Carvey lays down on the white couch, but a dog comes by to chew on him. Carvey holds on tight as the canine almost takes off his hairpiece. The actor tries to keep a straight face while the audience loses it with laughter. He probably smells my dog! <laughs> it just goes to show that real animals with empty stomachs are always hard to control on live television. Number 14. Cork Soakers On a tour of a vineyard, visitors receive a look at the bottling process in extreme detail. This is where the final step in the bottling process happens where we prepare all the corks for all the bottles of Brunello that you saw earlier. Jimmy Fallon and Horatio Sands are two workers speaking about the process of soaking corks, which sounds much different with their pronunciation. As you can see, we are soaking all the corks in this room right now. As a result, host Janet Jackson messes up her dialogue as she tries to work through the absurd premise. Fallon and Sands use their comedic accents to dish out more than a few double entendres, which only get raunchier as they keep flying by. Can you imagine that? Me soaking his cork while he soaked mine. Jackson seems to be having lots of fun reading the cue cards and enunciating the phrase in question. Number 13. More Cowbell Often considered one of the best SNL sketches ever, More Cowbell has a following all its own. By the way, my name is Bruce Dickinson. Yes, the Bruce Dickinson. Will Ferrell plays the cowbell player for Blue Oyster Cult as they record Don't Fear the Reaper. His enjoyable movements only intensify after some notes from the producer, played by Christopher Walken. I'll be honest, fellas, it was sounding great, but I could have used a little more cowbell. The focus on all things cowbell, Ferrell's moves, and Walken's delivery only make things harder to stay focused. Jimmy Fallon and others try to maintain their composure and poorly hide their laughter through it all. Don't blow this forest, Gene! Could be, could be so selfish, Gene. We can't blame them either, considering the comical intensity of the key performances. Number 12. Close Encounter Kate McKinnon plays her most outrageous character in the sketch Close Encounter. She's one of three people who had contact with aliens, but the only one that had a much different experience. Wow. <laughs> what floor were you guys on? I woke up in a dirty metal dome and uh, 40 little gray aliens watched me pee in a steel bowl. <laughs> and they took the bowl, walked out. McKinnon's every phrase is absolutely hilarious with every subsequent detail of the extraterrestrials. These fancy cats are seeing God. Meanwhile, I'm starting phase two, which is me sitting on a stool while 40 gray aliens take turns gently batting my knockers. <laughs> Guest host Ryan Gosling quickly breaks down, sparking contagious fits of laughter from the other cast members. We couldn't do much better considering the hysterically funny dialogue. With the ill-fated journey well on its way, the ensemble barely recovers to say their lines and finish the scene. It also speaks to the sketch's staying power that the actress reprised the role. Tell me about God. What's God's deal? <laughs> Number 11. Debbie Downer, Disney World Debbie Downer is a showcase for Rachel Dratch's buzzkill character to ruin everyone's day. Ever since they found mad cow disease in the U.S., I'm not taking any chances. It can live in your body for years before it ravages your brain. For this sketch at Disney, the entire family has breakfast in an increasingly broken sketch. Nobody is safe as the various cast members break down one by one. Gratch struggles to land her punchlines while her co-stars hold back their giggling, eventually overcome by laughter herself. They may, we may never know how many people perished. <laughs> The chaos only makes the scene more enjoyable as the meal becomes bombarded by endless chuckling. By the time the lead actress has to say her big line, it is much funnier knowing that she can't even do it without cracking up. By the way, it's official. <laughs> I can't have children. 
Number 10, Weekend Update, Smokery Farms. Here to comment are the owners of Smokery Farms Meat Gift Delivery Service, <laughs> Vanetta and Wileen Starkey. <laughs> A.D. Bryant and Kate McKinnon sometimes break during their shared SNL sketches. Selling cuts of meat from bad animals, the performers look like they're ready to lose it in this Weekend Update feature. You do not need to feel guilty with us, because going forward, Smokery Farms will only serve meat from animals that are individually stupid and bad. <laughs> Colin Jost plays along as the duo continues to push through their sketch. Avoiding eye contact with each other, both actresses barely make it through the crazy script without breaking character. <laughs> and the scent is strong. <laughs> now, our veal cutlet, okay? Their prop basket of raw meat also throws them for a loop as its pungent scent floods the set. Building off of the chaotic premise, the comedians have a field day with the writing and stumble through their remaining dialogue. Oh, yum! Yeah. 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 <laughs> now, now, I gotta say that this... Now, what is it? You think this? <laughs> this roast duck got to be... Number 9. Whiskers Are We with Tiffany Haddish. So come on down for our fall cat giveaway here at Whiskers Are We. This sketch is what happens when live animals feature heavily on the show. With this idea about a cat adoption center, Whiskers Are We forces Kate McKinnon and guest host Tiffany Haddish to handle multiple felines at once. The animals soon rebel as the cast attempts to keep the sketch on track. Playing referee to a basket of feisty cats, the actresses introduce more and more pets that don't want to be there. First I laughed, then he choked me from across the room. <laughs> Dumb little jerk. <laughs> you look, you look tense. You look tense. McKinnon has her work cut out for her as she holds a hairless cat that is ready to fight. You won't have to worry about shedding with Toby. He shaved everything off for a gay circuit party. <laughs> Despite the distractions, the two performers complete the piece without any injuries or major catastrophes. Number 8. The Californians. Stuart has cancer. I'm glad you came over to Evan. What well, too? Maybe you should get going before Stuart gets home. Among the more famous recurring sketches of its era, The Californians has taken on a life of its own with its parody of soap operas and the SoCal lifestyle. The direction-obsessed characters discover dramatic revelations about each other that prompt ridiculous reactions. I skipped Wilshire and took Beverly over to Santa Monica and took that all the way up. <laughs> hey, Stuart, yeah, I just came over to fi fix the speakers, uh, the outside speakers on the patio. I think they sound pretty good. Fred Armisen's wild delivery throws off Bill Hader almost instantly, with the latter unable to contain himself as Armisen and Kristen Wiig play their parts with complete gusto. Get back on San Vicente, take it to the 10, then switch over to the 405 North and let it dump you out into Mulholland where you belong. <laughs> By the time the Portlandia lead makes a toast, his on-screen friend almost breaks once more. You'd like to make a toast? Thank you, Aubrey, for bringing this wonderful California wine all the way from Santa Barbara County, California. You can only imagine getting through a scene like this with some of the most brilliant comedic minds at the top of their game. Number 7. Dr. Beeman's Office. Test results. No, there's no mark here. My name? It's Mark. Will Ferrell leads this sketch as a doctor with questionable methods and a habit of taking long phone calls. He's looking at me right now. <laughs> His big, sweaty, fat face <laughs> sucking in air like a dying fish. As absurd as they come, this scene features several characters that seem eager to sabotage it at any point. The appearance of Tim Meadows only makes things crazier as he dances. I'm sorry, there's absolutely nothing I can do for your son, but I can do the robot. <laughs> While the couple awaits their child's test results, the doctor frequently says dialogue that's hilariously misplaced. Even Farrell ends up laughing along with scene partner Molly Shannon in this meandering sketch. Truth is, we misplaced your baby. <laughs> 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 
You can tell the writers hit a dead end with the final product, but the performers managed to carry it to the finish line with a knowing wink. That was a rough. <laughs> Number six, locker room pep talk. Quarterback and guest host Peyton Manning joins a losing basketball team for this sketch. Hoping to rally his team in the locker room, coach Will Forte dances to a supposedly inspiring track. Various cast members try to keep a straight face and hold towels over their mouths to stop themselves from laughing. After some stellar moves, Manning joins Forte to dance along with him. The ironic track and Forte's flourishes are so ridiculous that everyone is seconds away from chuckling. And through it all, you can tell that the lead performer really goes for it in a sketch that almost destroys the cast. Number 5. Girlfriend's Game Night In this sketch, Bill Hader plays an elderly man named Horace that joins his partner for a game night. Hi, hi, sorry we're late, it's been a chaotic week. <laughs> Horace's sons are suing me again. Horace, where are you going? To the Chicago- Oh, Horace, be careful! The awkward gathering seems to be going well until Cecily Strong has to sit on Horace's lap. Considering the wacky script and direction, it's only a matter of time before somebody loses control. Don't do that here! Hurry, it's a good one. Hater later backs up and is unable to see as he begins pushing the table behind him. You know what? No. <laughs> Taking half the set with him, the performer stifles a laugh as he tries to deliver his lines. You should be ashamed of yourselves. This one is Melissa Villasenor in particular hides her face as she giggles through the mistake. Thankfully for everyone, nobody was injured and the set didn't completely collapse. Number 4. Dress Rehearsal – Ronaldo and Alexi This sketch might have been an excuse for two friends to try out their best comedic accents. Okay, so a Santa Claus. He says I'm going to put Rodolfo in the... <laughs> As two talkative doormen, Bill Hader and Fred Armisen greet the people who exit their building with tales about Christmas. They also try to maintain their composure through the lengthy stories. Hey, Bobby, drunk uncle! <laughs> you see me! You see me! <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, baby. As performers like Vanessa Bayer and Bobby Moynihan stop by, the main duo crack each other up with their zany personalities. Both actors crumble as they can't seem to get through their dialogue without laughing. So, they made this. <laughs> Even Jamie Foxx spots them and tries to hold himself together. In a failed attempt to salvage the sketch, the main players make it all the more hilarious with their fumbled efforts. Man, last year, this guy, for a tip, he gave me, he gave me a bottle. <laughs> he gave me a, <laughs> a, a red wine. And you know what the label's saying? Van Buren is saying? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Number three, Super Showcase Spokesmodels. Congratulations, Deborah. You're on your way. With two of the funniest performers in SNL history leading the way, this sketch is one of the best moments of both Kristen Wiig and Maya Rudolph's time on the show. Their two models reveal a list of game show prizes in a string of visual gags. It's a real all in one! <laughs> it's a glamorous one day, no night's day. <laughs> Doing poses and using accents, the comedians cannot help but giggle during their presentation. Bill Hader also tries to mask his laughter as the piece goes off the rails. If your mind likes trickle, you might like chicken! <laughs> You like chicken, Deborah? Showing off golf packages and chickens, there's no way any of the comedians could stay professional through this wacky scene. Along with fantastically funny stars at the helm, this sketch is so silly that it was bound to break down. <laughs> Number two, Matt Foley, Van Down by the River. All right, how's everybody? 
Good, good, good. There are few SNL characters as iconic as Chris Farley's Matt Foley. In one of the show's finest moments, Farley wreaks havoc in a family's basement. First off, I am 35 years old, I am divorced, and I live in a van down by the river. The entire scene works as a performance showcase that is so gloriously unhinged that nobody is completely ready for it. Getting up close and personal with co-stars David Spade and Christina Applegate, the loud motivational speaker is so crazy that it's impossible for them to keep a straight face. From what I've heard, you're using your paper not for writing, but for rolling doobies. <laughs> You're gonna be doing a lot of doobie rolling when you're living in a van down by the river! The comedian even caps off the sketch by falling into a coffee table, showing the lengths he'll go to for a laugh. Oh, Matt's gonna be your shadow! Here's you, here's Matt, there's you, there! <laughs> With the feeling that the entire cast could have broken down at any minute, there's an added layer of comedic tension in this classic sketch. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Every Stefan Hey Stefan, uh, are you okay? You seem different. I've had a weird few years. Okay. Yeah. Stefan is one of the most popular recurring characters in Weekend Update history, with every sketch revolving around a ridiculous list of New York clubs. Each explanation involves increasingly bizarre venues that Bill Hader already has a tough time delivering. But co-writer John Mulaney makes it harder by changing the script at the last minute. Well, they have a Jewish Dracula. Oh. What's his name? Sidney Applebaum. Oh, okay. <laughs> This ensures that Hater trips up during the live show because he has to read several lines for the first time. For a healthy snack, oh, be good, yeah. hit the bar and have some Frasians, raisins that look like Fraser. <laughs> or, or try your luck with the human pinata. With that knowledge in mind, it's amazing that the performer can get through any of his performances. It's also easy to see why he chooses to keep covering his face throughout his appearances. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.